Hello there, Conrad of the Commonwealth from here. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time redefined how we play adventure games by giving us polygonal spaces to attack and defend in, and in no other case is this more visible than in the game's nine dungeons. And fittingly enough, within these we find exactly ten bosses, waiting for us after clearing the entire temple preceding it. In other words, this is the final trial, or set of trials, before making a triumphant exit with another heart container, not counting the final dungeon, obviously. So be sure to press that like and subscribe buttons with notification bell on if you haven't already, as it is time to rank the bosses of one of the best video games of all time. Also, spoilers for a well over two decades old video game. Number 10. King Dodongo in Dodongo's Cavern The source of the Goron's hunger struggles is not a very good boss, as he looks threatening, but he really isn't. He has two attacks, roll you over, which you as childling can easily avoid by simply moving out of his path, plus make sure that he doesn't burn you. The latter attack can actually be completely avoided by throwing bombs into its mouth, a trick that would be repeated in Skyward Sword 13 years later. Both Skaldera and King Dodongo are just uninteresting fire bosses, which simply stand stand in your way, but aren't too threatening if you know how to use bombs and avoid a charging enemy. Both are the second boss in their respective games and feel like a slight downgrade from the first battle, both in tension, setting and overall threat level. King Dodongo is simply the piggy in the middle of two more interesting bosses, which we'll soon get back to. Number 9. Morpha in the Water Temple the adult section of Ocarina of Time definitely holds some of the best bosses in the game. But then you have Morph, a liquid-based abomination unleashed by Ganondorf which has drained Lake Hylia and frozen over Zora's domain, forcing Princess Ruto to head into the dreaded water temple at the bottom of Lake Hylia, where she by all means loses her life likely to Morph. This tragedy alone brings the fight above King Dodongo for me, plus the fact that Morpha can actually grab you and throw you around the boss chamber. The long shot is your best friend in this encounter, which can either be somewhat challenging or cheesed by placing yourself in one of the corners and dragging the eye out of the abomination to slice it down with no risk to yourself since Morpha can simply not reach you. Rinse repeat three times and victory is yours. Combining water bosses and quality seems to be a challenge for the Zelda team, and in this case it would probably have been better if Darkling was the dungeon boss and Morpha the mini boss who fight right after getting the long shot. Number 8. The Parasitic Armored Arachnid Goma Inside the Great Deku Tree Sometimes simple darkness and creepy character design is enough to leave a lasting first impression. Though it isn't the best Goma fight in the series, the circumstances regarding the Great Deku Tree elevates the stakes of this fight. Here you have a parasite placed by Ganondorf who is slowly killing the Great Deku Tree, your father figure since first arriving in the Kokiri Forest. The fight itself is rather simple though, just aim your hookshot and cause Goma to fall down. Then slice your way with your Kokiri sword or even better use a stick combined with Deku Nuts to never face Goma's minions. It is a super easy boss, but a memorable one which isn't truly over until the great Deku Tree has passed away and granted you the Kokiri Emerald. Atmosphere elevates this fight, but definitely not its gameplay design, so let's get over to a boss that is just as memorable. Number 7. The Subterranean Lava Dragon Volvagia, found in the Fire Temple. The build up to this fight is what makes it stand out as you are prepared for this boss fight since you return back to Goron City and learn that Ganondorf is in the process of feeding nearly every Goron the revived scourge of Death Mountain Volvagia. Then as you enter the Fire Temple, you encounter Darunia about to confront the dragon without the Megaton Hammer, a foolish move which can only have one outcome, unless you can claim the hammer yourself which you do while also freeing the imprisoned Gorons. Even so, it is too late for Darunia and instead you have to play a game of Waka Dragon against Volvagia. The dragon has two attacks, namely fire when flying and a hair flip. But other than that, this boss stands on the emotions involved in this fight. Feelings that would be even stronger if the Volvagia arc found in the non-canon Ocarina of Time manga was also present in the game. Still, it is a good fight with a great ending and a Darunia who despite dying holds no hard feelings for Link but instead is thankful for rescuing his people. Number 6. The Phantom Shadow Beast Bongo Bongo in the Shadow Temple this opponent is foreshadowed immediately after you defeat Morpha and head back for Kakariko Village. And what an entrance this pissed off beheaded entity makes, breaking out from the bottom of the well and knocking out both Sheik and Link before heading for the Shadow Temple to deal with Impa. 
It is just that there's no way for us to make our way to properly confront this entity without returning back in time to as a child claim the lens of truth. In the bottom of the well, where we find a carving depicting the beheaded head and hands of Bongo Bongo. The subsequent fight in the Shadow Temple on Bongo's drum is filled with tension as you have to utilize your bow and arrow to stun Bongo's hands and eye in the place of the missing head. Another fight to avenge a lost soul, in this case Impa, who is thanks to our efforts awakened as the Sage of Shadow after Bongo's final drum session. Talk about going out while jamming out. Now then, we are halfway through and with the best bosses left remaining, it is time for a big one as my number 5 is none other than the King of Evil, Ganondorf in Ganon's Tower. The second to last boss in the game against the Gerudo and self-proclaimed King of Evil is the culmination of a series of loss, struggles and a determination for retribution against the individual who ruined your life. In the Zelda canon, this is the fight that creates the timeline split as Link either wins or loses this battle, an outcome of defeat that is not seen in any other The Legend of Zelda game to this date. And that alone speaks volumes of what is at stake in this battle for Princess Zelda, the Triforce and Hyrule. The build up to this fight is absolutely sublime. Princess Zelda is kidnapped right after handing over the bow of light to the hero of time and forcing him to climb those steps to confront the self-proclaimed king of evil. It is just that as the battle begins, it is just another round of beam tennis. And in my personal opinion, since it is for the most part this and breaking the platforms around you, this fight is not getting higher than this. The gameplay of this boss is not as appealing, but that is oh so deliberate since Ganondorf's fall is just the beginning of Link and Princess Zelda's trouble at Ganon's castle and the final battle of the game. A struggle we'll soon get back to, but first let's get over to the tennis battle that in my eyes is better than this one. Number 4. The Evil Spirit from Beyond Phantom Ganon in the Forest Temple How is this fight better than Ganondorf? Oh, the element of surprise. You've just fought your way through a massive forest maze and temple, defeated the pose, and are now so close to your childhood friend Sari. As the hero of time, you enter a room full of paintings, but nobody is home, so you head out. At that moment, the gate in front rises, Link turns around, and there is Ganondorf on his horse. Or actually, his phantom, which immediately begins a round of the mirror, or in this case, painting game. Select the right Phantom Ganon, use your acquired bow to strike him and then face a round of tennis. Fail to strike him in both instances and risk being electrocuted. Plain and simple, straight to the point and with a very solid ending and warning that it will not be as easy fighting the true Ganondorf. Well at least this fight has more variety and as previously mentioned, surprise and twist. Hence why it is slightly higher on the list. Number 3. The Bioelectric Anemone Baronade Inside Jabu Jabu's Belly Gameplay, seriously gameplay, and a unique boss design that is disgusting and which you want to defeat as quickly as possible. That is Baronade, the boss that stands in the way from rescuing Child Princess Ruto and obtaining the Zora Sapphire so you can return back to Child Zelda. It may not have any personalities compared to most of the other entries on this list, what it lacks in humanity it makes up for in a rather convincing spectacle. After all, this is the final dungeon boss you fight before pulling the Master Sword. And as such, this is the boss that forces you to Z-target while moving around to release its electric tentacles and jellyfish. Spinning to electrocute you, this boss can be a real threat if you haven't mastered Z-targeting, sidewalking and the boomerang. It is a final test of your childling skills. That is what makes this boss fight so great. It is menacing and able to kill you in no time if you're reckless. And that is what makes this boss fight so great, including its very brutal end and engagement with Princess Ruto through the Zora Sapphire. No doubt, this fight is the polar opposite of Morpha. Number 2. The Sorcerer's Sisters Twin Rova in the Spirit Temple. Now we're talking. A fight with great build-up, a clever gameplay mechanic, multi-form boss and a very humorous conclusion. First off, the battle is set at two points in time, as a child with the kidnapping of Naburu and then as an adult when you first face Kome and Kotake's Iron Knuckle which is revealed to be a brainwashed Naburu. When she falls out of the armor, the two Gerudo witches are quick to capture her once again and then waiting for the hero to arrive for another sacrifice. 
The fact that you're starting this battle fighting two separate entities and have to deflect ice by targeting your shield towards the one that holds fire and the opposite makes this battle stand out in a very positive way. It is a battle of targeting where you have to position right to not end up being burned or frozen. And that alone would have been enough for a solid boss fight. But just as you're frozen and burned Kuruma and Kotake, the two pissed off hags combine their forces to form the actual twin rover, a tall, strong, attractive and levitating Gerudo. But with one weakness, by throwing her ice and fire spells, you can strike back at her as long as you make sure to avoid mixing the two, using once again their own weapon against them. No doubt, I love this fight, especially for how the two witches think that they still are able to fight but are actually passing away to the afterlife. A solid fight in Hans with equally clever writing which grants you second place. But seriously, could we end with anything else but… Number 1. Ganon in the ruins of Ganon's castle. Here's a 101 on how to make players drop their jaw and tear up after finishing your game. Save the best for the last. And in Ocarina of Time, that is no doubt Ganondorf rising up from the ruins of his castle with the Triforce of Power transforming into Ganon, the Demon King that would continue to plague Hyrule all the way until the era of the Wild. This moment, accompanied with some of Koji Kondo's best musical arrangements of all time and having to fight most of the fight without the Master Sword, made this fight the best boss fight in my eyes in the Zelda series, until Monk Mask Koshia. And since that was the DLC fight, this is still my favorite day one base game Zelda boss fight of all time. Everything in this battle is paced perfectly. The twists, the turns, the weak point not being the head or eye, but the tail. I simply love this fight as it perfectly caps off Ocarina of Time, with Ganon knocking out the Master Sword and setting up a barrier between you and Princess Zelda, then falling to his knees as you reclaim your blade for the final portion of the battle, and finally, after Zelda uses her power, plummet the Blade of Evil's Bane straight into the beast's mouth. So damn satisfying. Then Ganondorf being sealed and threatening everyone involved in his downfall and their descendants to be murdered. The aftermath timeline split and the end. This is exactly what a final battle should be, a culmination of absolutely everything in the game with the hero, the princess and the sages joining forces together to defeat the evil that ruined their lives. Nothing more needs to be said here, that is my ranking of all Zelda Ocarina of Time bosses. But do you have a different order? Then share them in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, then be sure to press that like button, smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you also have all notifications on to not miss any future Zelda ranking videos. The more views and likes on this one, the more likely we'll make more of them. Finally, a big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash common realm patrons and in particular to royal producer Charles Shash. And please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.